Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. From time to time, I see some comments and I do not pay them any mind. But this one, I'm going to address it because from time to time, I see comments like these. Someone posted this comment on one of my videos. The comment was made yesterday. The person said, Do you realize the harm you are doing to our country with your style of reporting and even your personal safety? I responded, Worry about your personal safety and I will worry about mine. How is my style of reporting doing any harm to the country? Why not explain? The person responded, You don't think your preoccupation in presenting Jamaica as the most dangerous place in the world, which it is, is hurting the country? If you were a potential visitor, would you come to Jamaica after watching a few of your videos? That would be pretty dumb. I responded, so, reporting the truth is my preoccupation to you. Would you rather to know what's happening or would you rather everything be hush-hush? The person hasn't yet responded. Now, if you look on your screen, that is an excerpt of an article posted on the Ministry of Tourism website. The article was posted on November 9, 2022. It says, For the full year 2022, Jamaica is projecting it will welcome over 3 million stopover arrivals and receive total earnings from tourism of over 3.7 billion United States dollars. The destination is also expected to return to 2019 pre-COVID arrivals levels in 2023 and remain on track to welcome 5 million visitors by 2025 so for those of you who are saying myself and other bloggers are harming the country by reporting the fact mash dong that lie my reporting is for jamaicans not tourists i have taken on this duty to inform jamaicans as to what is happening in our country tourists are coming here and enjoying jamaica we who are living here and some of you who are living overseas would love to come back and enjoy it but we simply can't so hiding the truth is that gonna help or we as bloggers reporting what is happening is that making you more aware or do you see it as us harming the country if that's what you are thinking or if you think my reporting is harming the country that a fear business all right now in the news today a female teacher in her late 50s from a sentan address and six jdf soldiers they are lucky to be alive this is due to an accident that took place last night thursday march 30 about seven o'clock it took place along the cooper's pen main road in the parish of trelawney now what we are learning is that a jdf private he was driving a suzuki truck now, if you look on your screen, it's a truck looking like that one that this JDF soldier was driving. Apart from the driver, five other soldiers were in the truck. So, what we are learning is that the JDF truck, it was driving along the Cooper's Pen main road. Remember now, the Cooper's Pen main road is a minor road. The truck was heading out onto the major road, which is the North Coast Highway. It is said that on reaching the intersection, the driver for the truck tried to apply his brake, but there was no brake. It is said that he swerved left to try and avoid the oncoming traffic, but he ended up losing control of the truck. As a result, the truck overturned and slid into the path of a white 2012 Toyota Crown motor car, which was being driven by a female teacher who was on her way home. This caused a collision. We are told that three of the JDF soldiers, they received serious injuries, but their injuries are not considered life-threatening. 
the three other JDF soldiers, they were also injured. The female teacher in her late 50s, we are told that she was badly shaken up. Sad indeed. Now, in this next story, that female on your screen, her name is, well, is it Tisha or Tessia? I'm going to stick with Tisha. She is about 18 years old and she's living at Marchtown in the Green Island Police area in the parish of Anova. Tisha, she was reported missing at the Green Island Police Station in the parish of Anova on Wednesday, March 29. She has not been seen or heard from since. Well, up to the time of recording this video, we are told that she has not been seen or heard from. We are told that yesterday, the police, they received information that she was killed and buried in a shallow grave in the area. As a result, the police and residents of the area, they carried out an extensive search at a place named Garden Command in the Marchtown area. Tisha was not found. We are told that last night, about 8 o'clock, the police, they went back into the area and they carried out a raid. A house was searched and a young man, who is said to have been in a relationship with Tisha, he was taken into police custody. We are told that he's popularly known as Twin and he's in his early 20s. So the question is, the question on everyone's lips in the area is, where is Tisha? Let's hope. Let's hope that she is still alive and return home safely and if you have any information where she might be please call the green island police at 876-956-9200 that's 876-956-9200 in this next story look how easy it is for you to lose your life a man he's in his early 40s he's a tour bus operator and he's living in the parish of Westmoreland. This man, he operates a black Toyota Foxy which he normally park in the vicinity of the Legends Hotel on Norman Malley Boulevard, popularly known as the Beach Road in Negril in the parish of Westmoreland. Last night, Thursday, March 30, about some minutes to 12 midnight, this man, he was on the hustle. He was sitting in the driver's seat at his usual spot. He was waiting to see if any tourist wanted to go anywhere in the night so he could eat a food. We are told that suddenly, all hell broke loose. A guy was seen running from down the beach road towards the Legends Hotel. A guy was seen chasing that guy. But guess what? The guy wasn't only chasing. He had a gun in his hand and he was firing shots at the other guy. And I'm not talking about one or two shots. We are told that he fired several shots at that guy. Both guys, they ran past the voxy that this man was sitting in. And it appears as if the guy who was being chased, he made good his escape from the guy who was firing at him. When the shooting subsided, it was realized that the tour operator who was sitting in his bus. He was shot. He received a gunshot wound to his left cheek. Luckily, it wasn't a fatal bullet. He was assisted by residents to a nearby hospital where he was treated. We are told that the center of the front windscreen on his vehicle was also damaged by bullets. The police were informed and when they processed this crime scene, we are told that it 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So, this man, in no in a war with nobody, he wasn't the target for this attack. All he was trying to do is make a honest living for himself and his family, and he could have ended up losing his life. Just like that. The mayhem. No, in this story, this man. He was trying to make a honest living and he ended up losing his life. I carried a story yesterday and I told you about an incident that took place early yesterday morning. Thursday, March 
30, about some minutes to 1 o'clock. It took place on a play field at Reed's Pen, right at the intersection of Hibiscus Drive and East Mid Street, 7 East in Greater Portmore, in the parish of St. Catherine. I have now obtained a photo of the man who I reported about. There he is on your screen. His name is Lloyd Simpson, but he was popularly known as Leon. Leon, he is 28 years old and he was living at Summerfield in Chapleton in the parish of Clarendon. The information we are now getting is that Leon, he was a plumber and he got a plumbing job in the Portmore area. As a result, he was staying at one of his cousin's house in the area. It is said that Leon, he was heading to his cousin's home early yesterday morning after he was dropped off by the contractor that he was working for. Apparently, Leon was not familiar with the area and it is said that he took the wrong route. Some hoodlums from the area, they saw Leon and started asking him questions. They were of the view that the answers Leon was giving them were not satisfying to them. As a result, we are told that they stabbed Leon 19 times and they shot him. We are told that the hoodlums, they then left Leon to die like a dog on the playing field. Leon, he managed to call his mom and told her what took place. And it was his mom who called the police. Sad indeed. Just like that, another hard-working Jamaican who was trying to make some money for himself and his family, he was cut down by hoodlums who claim they are policing their turf. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to do it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button. As also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be the first to be notified. In the final story for today, this story is about being vigilant. This story is about taking nothing for granted. This story is about being alert. This one took place yesterday afternoon, Thursday, March 30, about 4.30. It took place at the Wagon Wholesale on Railway Lane, in Montego Bay, in the parish of St. James. So, this is what we are learning. A man, his name is Mr. O'Neill Wilson, but he is popularly known as Wilcock. On February 28th, he celebrated his 54th birthday. He was living at Hermitage, in the Betteltown Police area, in the parish of Westmoreland. He has been a security guard for many years. We are told that he once used to work with guardsman and he worked at various locations in Montego Bay to include banks etc. Wilcock was a licensed firearm holder. He owned a Glock 19 9mm pistol. He was working at the Wagon Wholesale yesterday. This wholesale is run by some Chinese. Now I'm gonna show you a video with the last moments of Wilcock's life. The moment that a hoodlum pulled a gun and killed him. I'm going to play the video in real time and I'm going to stop before the hoodlum killed Wilcock. After that, I'm going to slow down the video and point out a few things to you. Watch this. So, you see that? Now, let's go back over the video together. I'm going to point out a few things. Look on your screen. The arrow is pointing at Wilcock. If you look good, you will see that he is preoccupied, talking to one of the Chinese who is up in an office right here.
the arrow is now pointing on the killer. Look at how this hoodlum is dressed. He's dressed in a hoodie. He's dressed in a mask. This guy, he would have walked past Wilcock at the front door and went into the wholesale. He has all the features of a hoodlum. And Wilcock, he was still sitting and chatting. And I know, I know, you know, many of you are going to say I'm being heartless because I am blaming Wilcock for everything. Understand this. Wilcock is dead. Whatever I'm saying here is neither here nor there for him. I am talking to persons who are alive. Security officers are licensed firearm holder who are just going around and acting like everything is normal. Take a good look at this now. The guy pulled out the gun right in front of Wilcock. And because he was not paying any attention, he didn't see the gun. My theory is, from watching the entire video, the guy didn't just walk up and shoot Wilcock. It would appear as if he wanted to juke him down and take his gun. Wilcock reacted. Maybe he was going for his gun, but it was too late. And the guy fired one shot, hitting him. How many times? Have you gone into establishments and see security officers not paying attention? Security officers, especially the armed ones, only have to be more vigilant. We are told that Wilcox 9mm pistol was recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend. About Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica. Jamaica, 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 Jama